What's up everyone and welcome to the Weekly Flare episode 28. I am one of your hosts, James Walter. And with me as always, Mr. Chris Garcia. What's going on? What's going on? You wanna know something funny? I do. I'm a host here at the podcast. Yes. And as at my second job, I'm now a host. You're a host. So you really are the host with the most yes, hosting I am. careers. Double host. The host with the most host. Cool, man. How's your week? Long, tiring. Long. You've been working a lot. Oh yeah. How many hours are you working these days? Uh, about fifty hours one job, about seventeen the other job. Ooh, that's a lot of hours. That's not too bad. Chris, I'm working forty hours this week. I worked eight hour days all week, and it's great. I love that shit. I went from working ten hour days for well, last forever, to now eight hour days, and it's awesome. I feel yeah. like I get home, I'm like, man, I have so much day left. Yes. It's crazy. Are you playing softball pretty soon? Uh, no, we, well, we were talking about maybe playing co-ed in the fall, okay. but I don't know if we'll have enough people. If, so, if you want to, I can actually find you a league. I forgot to mention that off air. Oh, okay. But, uh, my church team will be playing at Archdale. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to consider Archdale? That. That's a long old drive. Yeah. Actually, it's not that far. No, me, it's about the same thing as the eh, place was. You know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that's cool, Chris. We started, me and Rachel, Rachel and I started. This new food thing, it's called the Whole30. I don't want to call it a diet, even though technically it is a diet. I don't feel like it is because you're not counting your calories, you're not weighing yourself. They specifically say, don't weigh yourself. Don't count your calories. Basically, it's a paleo diet, um, which I'm not sure how different it is from paleo diet because I've never actually read what a paleo diet is other than you don't eat like grains Mm -hmm. and like other stuff like that. So basically, this is you eat like stuff that's not processed, that's not have like sugar added, that doesn't have whether that's artificial or real sugar added. Um, We can't have anything like nuts or anything like that. Well, peanuts specifically, the kind of, they call it like legumes or something Mm -hmm. like that. I don't know how you say it. Something like that. Um, But anyway, so it's been two days. It's it's been good so far. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only two days in. So uh, I've been blogging about it. So if anyone wants to keep up with it, they can just read the blog and see what's going on there. I think a normal paleo diet is harder. It's like, only non-processed foods. It's like non-processed, which this is the same thing, non-processed. Water. I think straight out water. Yeah, it's like we can have water and that's really all. Like you can have coconut milk like and stuff and like you can use certain kinds of juices mm-hmm. in things that call for fruit juice. But yeah. it has to be like very specific kind. Yeah. And no dairy, yeah, no, no cheeses, dairy, no cheese, yeah, no... no no, nothing sugar. Uh, no sugar is pretty much no junk food. Even if like you make it from the ingredients that you're allowed to have, but, like still don't make it because the idea is to like get used to eating more natural. Mm-hmm. Now it's really weird. I usually eat a bowl of cereal in the morning, and then I am like hungry for lunch. Like at ten o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, mm-hmm. I'm like hungry. So I eat a snack, then I eat lunch, then I'm hungry again in the afternoon. So yesterday we started. We had three eggs for breakfast and like half an avocado. I was stuffed. Lunchtime came and I really wasn't that hungry, but I still ate because I try to keep my food on like a pretty consistent mm-hmm. schedule during the week. So I ate, we had sweet potato soup, which was good. And then we came home and I didn't eat dinner until like 6.30, which normally I get home at like 5.30 and I'm like, let's eat right now. Mm-hmm. So it, in the sense that it's like, you don't have to worry about how much you're eating because like what you're eating, you're not going to eat too much of it if you don't stuff yourself. Yeah. So that's cool. So we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's weird so you can't weigh yourself and I usually weigh myself every morning as part of like my routine just because mm-hmm. I do, which I guess you're not supposed to do anyway, but whatever. I like that kind of diet because it's not a hardcore paleo diet. No, it's, but it's very... It's presented, in, and it might be exactly the same as a paleo diet, I don't know, but mm-hmm. it's presented in, in a much better way. They're like, these are the reasons you should do this. And like, it's kind of presented like a 30 day challenge more so than like, you're gonna, you know, so. It's cool because like if you like cheat on a day, they're like you have to start the whole thirty days oh. over. So like there's no cheating for the whole thirty days, but they're like you're gonna feel better, you have more energy, you sleep better, and then there's like all these like other medical conditions that they're like are symptoms of having like a lot of processed foods and stuff. I don't know the food science behind all of that, and sometimes I kind of question how you know much of that it has to do with just how healthy you are in general versus just eating processed food. Mm. But I figure eating more natural food won't be bad anyway. This might save you from going out and spending money. Yeah, out. so groceries are a little bit more expensive because we had to like, you know, normally like I said for breakfast, I eat cereal 
and for lunch I'll take like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is a lot cheaper to make than anything we're eating now, but that's okay, it's not that much more, and we won't be eating out, so. So it all evens out. Yeah, much. yeah, it all evens um, out. After 30 days has come, mm -hmm. please tell me how it goes, and if you have the program still, I think I would like to try. Yeah, it's just a book, so okay, that's fine. If you, book, wanna, you can if you check it out, it, it's easy. If you don't like it, then I probably won't do it. But if you consider it, I mean, two good. days in, I feel fine. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've eaten plenty, and I feel like I haven't been eating. Uh, other than having eggs in the morning, it's it's a pretty good diet. I mean, and there's other things you can eat in the morning. Eggs is just easy. So cool. Anyways, we'll look at that. This isn't the food podcast, no. but that is interesting. It's I'll good be vlogging book. about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Chris. What do we have on the docket to talk about tonight? We got a lot of stuff to talk about. I want to get my fingerprint scanned. Get that finger. Ooh, with the iPhone 6. Ooh, iPhone 6. Ooh, baby. fancy pants Garcia. I love it, man. Well, um, you don't like art, do you? I mean... I, I like art. You know, it's enjoyable. There's different I, types. I don't... I mean, podcasting is an art, right? Yes. Music is an art. Music is an art. I like music. So, I mean, yeah, I like art. Well, is that it? That's no, I mean, I was, I was asking. It's a quiz. I didn't, I didn't know. Did I pass? Per <laughs> Personally, I like music as an art. I like music. Poetry. I like film. Now. Um, I, I mean, I don't mind, like, painted art and stuff like that. It's just not. The, it doesn't necessarily do anything for me, but it's not like I'm like, oh, that's stupid. You know what I mean? In class, they usually say, hey, look at this painting. How does it make you feel or what do you see in this shadowing? You know, it's, this is what I think of. If I see a nice painting, what does this make you feel? That guy's a good painter. There you go. That's what it like. I Plain you know is that is that shallow of me? I don't know. I, I mean, that's just what it makes me think. I'm like, I, wow, that guy has a lot of talent. I think I went through and and pretty much uh, didn't lie, but just kind of bullcrap my way and, through the well, art class. Know, that's what you get for taking liberal art classes. True. Two pages. Write two pages of how this painting makes you feel. The only liberal art class I took was a film and culture class, and that was basically watch a film, write about it. That seems a lot more fun. Yeah, it was great. I like music appreciation too. Yeah. That's okay, too, depending on your professor. <laughs> well, uh, with art, let's see here. For example, we have Madison. She was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. 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 Got that right. SMA. Um, so I get, it might be a rare condition, but her doctor didn't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I guess this require this, this, you know, prohibits people from being able what, you know, uh, um. It makes your bones basically really weak and you can't, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you just can't do anything. Yeah, you like, they get to the point where like they can't even like flick switches, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got a guy here, um, Dwayne Sots. I can't say that. We always have, Sots. We always Zots. have, we always have really weird last it's, names. It's very foreign because it's got S-Z-O-T. What's that? Zots? It's gotta be Zots. Zots something like that. Zots. The Z might be silent. No, the S is probably silent. It's probably uh, Zots. Zots. Uh, he's an artist with a career in inventing tools to enable kids with disabilities to paint, draw, uh, pretty much blow bubbles. Um, pretty, blow bubble. pretty cool. Um, it's really cool. He said he's like known from the time that he was a kid that he wanted to be an artist, but that he didn't want to be like famous necessarily and have fortune, but he wanted to help people express themselves through or something like that. Is what mm -hmm. he said, right? Yes. And so he like just makes stuff to help disabled people like. There's a sweet roller he made that, like, this person, like, in their wheelchair had, like, this giant, like, paint roller. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That one, uh, he made that one actually in the 80s. Uh, really? A, pa a painting wheelchair uh, he built upon his current inventions. So that's what he was able to do. Um, I mean, he just continues to make plenty and uh, more and more stuff so people can, can do what they, you know, and find something that they like to do. Um, but he's set up shops in museums in Florida and uh, all you know all over and to help you know for example my uh, in Miami mm -hmm. Children's Trust and all kinds included we had invited 200 kids both those with disabilities and without to play together and that's a good thing as well it's bringing um, you have a lot of people that are that are bullied for their disabilities nowadays um, and so this kind of brings people together to show them that we're all same and all human um, and that we're able, you know, we, we should. It's just cool that yeah. he was like, he wanted to, instead of using his art and his talents to get like real famous and a lot of fortune and stuff, he decided that instead he wanted to help these other people who otherwise wouldn't be able to experience creating mm -hmm. their own art. 
And uh, it's cool, except I mean that that wheelchair roller really, really sweet. Looking. Yeah, there there's a lot of other stories with other kids impacted here. Uh, we're gonna put it up on the link as well. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a huge story, probably one of the longest. It was a had. long art. Yeah, it, it was, was so. It was good about three or four pages. It was cool though. But it was. But we're gonna put that cool. one up there. It was definitely. very cool. You guys can read it for yourself. Um, and you should read it. I might consider vlogging if, if need be, or just go up on the blog. Yeah, hit that blog. We'll do that one. Uh, but we've got, let's see, another cop story. This one, cops. If this one pulls bad up. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? Let's see here. This article. There you go. Yeah, there we go. This cop getting ready to retire. Ready to retire. Uh, he had two days left. <laughs> no, he didn't die. He no, he did not die. die. He, was, he was on <laughs> retirement. Brian Peters, he was um, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Uh, he spent his last job, last day on the job, not giving out tickets, like gift cards. That's right. He went and spent basically a day's worth of check and uh, bought gift cards to like, what do you say, like Walmart and like the local grocery mm -hmm. store. Yep. And I uh, just gave him out to people. He saw like he met some people and like he met like this one person with like a car that was broken, gave it to them, another mother of like four, gave them a gift card. Mm -hmm. It was just cool. It just was trying yeah. to help, you know, the community and the police department have better relations. Yes, it says uh, daily paycheck, equivalent of daily paycheck in his gift cards to Target. University chain cups, food, cup food. Not food line. Cup food, yep. Cup food. Uh, each worth 50 bucks, and again, handing them out people in Brooklyn Center. Uh, he wanted to walk around the city and just find people that could maybe use that extra cash or income to buy these kids some toys. Um, he's been on the force for about 14 years, yes. uh, which is pretty, it's a good it's amount. It's a pretty good amount. Pretty good amount, definitely. Um, he was also surprised the mother of four at a launch of a woman who, with a damaged car, like James said here. 20 year old man and his girlfriend, he gave a gift card to them as well. Um, pretty short story, but his community service is important. Um, and I, this is a way for other people to encourage others to be able to help others Just, out. You know, help out. Definitely. Helping is good. Yes. Definitely. Um, but James, I think this is more of your story that's coming up next. Um, Why? Because it's ridiculous? Yeah. Have you been to JFK Airport? Um, in New York? I think I've flown through JFK, like transferred, you know how to lay Yeah, transferred, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Have so, you ever flown through JFK? I've never been to New York yet. You've never been to New York? I've been to New York. Closest I've been is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. You're not really. Oh, Anyone who lives in New York, that's great. And like people who live there, like I get like why they like yeah. it because you can like walk everywhere. But like to go visit, like it's really not as touristy as like one would be led to believe. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's. But then again, I don't like get into the whole shopping. That's like basically all there is to actually yeah. do in New York, other than see like the Statue of Liberty and the Empire State Building. So I, I grew up flying to O'Hare maybe four or five times in my life. Mm -hmm. O'Hare is. Okay. Oh, here you I, go. I've been to. It's windy. Did I go to Denver? Denver. Denver. That's mile a, high. That's a weird one. It's a weird airport. We all know about that one. We're not going to talk about conspiracy. I bet you they're high now. Two <laughs> miles high. Oof. Let's see. So, Chris, when you fly, do you ever take your pets with you? I don't have any. Oh, you don't have any? No. Well, we've flown some pets before. Who, not Abby? me, not Rachel and I, but my family when I was younger. Abby. Actually, our cat that we had yeah, flew right. from Washington. To North Carolina, and uh, flying with a pet is probably weird. Did you see a uh, Homeward Bound? I did. Yeah, one remember of that? Favorite, one of my favorite movies when I was little. Great movie. The original, or not the original, but the one from like the nineties or eighties. Yeah, Homeward Bound: The Incredible mm -hmm. Journey. Yes. Or was it Homeward Bound Two: Lost in San Francisco? No, it no, was, it was San Francisco. One. That was the first one when the they were going one. through the woods. Going through the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that one they got taken over and left. The second one. They actually were supposed to be flying with their pets, mm -hmm. and they got, well, they freaked out and broke out of their cages, actually, so it's kind of their own fault. But if you fly with your pets through JFK, you can have them go to like a little day spa thing. And it's not just like a day spa, it's no. like a whole like, a hundred, and well, how big was like 170,000 square feet? Uh, yeah, 100, 178,000 square feet, um, yeah. and they call it the Ark. The Ark. And yes, that is a play on the yeah. Bible story. We exactly. Know. It has large flat screen TVs, climate control stalls, showers, massages, and privacy space, especially aside for penguin mating. It's got a special room for penguin mating. A paw shaved dog swimming pool, a jungle for cats. See, I don't know, man. This it's, is not only do they have a jungle for cats, the jungle for cats overlooks an aquarium so the cats can like look at the fish. 
Mm, dude, this thing, this is in JFK. Now, JFK gets a lot of animals through it because, like, people, like, travel with their dogs to London and okay. back. And, like, horses for, like, shows and cattle for, I don't know why you would fly with cattle. But, anyway, so, like, part of the thing is, like, they need animals to stay there when they've been overseas and back mm -hmm. for a period of time to make sure they're not bringing in any foreign diseases. But also because people with money to spend on thousand dollar dog, you know, to take their dog to London, you know, might not mind spending fifty dollars or a hundred dollars for their pet to have a nice yeah. lay over in JFK. That way, it's not just sitting in its kennel all day, but it can kind of get out, swim. You know, if it's a cat, it can climb the jungle mm -hmm. gym. Um, I don't. They say around seventy thousand animals go through uh, Kennedy yeah, Airport. A lot of your animals go through uh, JFK. Let me ask you this. Does this airport have stuff like this for humans? I don't know. Probably. They probably just have internet cafes. That's all people need these days. Yeah. If I was if I was on a layover I mean, at JFK, if I was a businessman, I would like a jungle gym to go climb while I was waiting for my layover. But I, mean, I don't think that's you know going to be the case for most people. I wouldn't mind showers uh, if I was on a layover. A shower, um, a pool. pool. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind that stuff. That'd be great. You make money on, on, like, on a lot of different things. I've been to Atlanta with a six hour layover before. There's a lot to do in the Atlanta airport, but there's not six hours worth of stuff. No, to do in the Atlanta's Atlanta an awful airport. It's a great airport, but it's also awful. I have a very love hate relationship with yeah, Atlanta airport. Yeah, I can say that. What's the best airport you've been to? Uh, PTI is really easy to get to. Yeah, it's not the best airport to be stuck in, but as far as getting there and you know flying out, it's really nice. I like Phoenix, but I've had I've heard a lot of problems from Phoenix. I've been I've been to Dallas Fort Worth. That's okay, but that was before all their expansions that mm. they've done now. So I've it's been, probably a lot nicer now. I've been to Ontario. I've been to O'Hare. O'Hare's just really packed. O'Hare is just big and packed. It's, it's big and packed. Yes. Charlotte's airport's okay. RDU's so much. I've never been very impressed with RDU's airport. It's kind of boring there. A a airports are airports. At the end of the day, they're all kind of the same, you know, but. Uh, if you fly through JFK with your pets, you can pay to have your pets uh, have a really nice layover while you're sitting there in those uncomfortable chairs trying to get a phone charger. Exactly. So that's what most people do in the airport now. That's what I have to try to do all the time. I just have like a portable battery charger ring with me. I'm good to go. Exactly. Don't have to worry about trying to find that charger. Well, Chris, what do you say we take a break? Okay. And then when we come back, what do you say we find out what's in this box? I'm surprised you haven't opened it yet. What's in this box? So we're going to go away and then we'll be right back.